were there any risk factors that that might have been observed in in the use of the insulin pump um and were there any differences in say like adrenal crises observed um compared to people who received this strategy versus not yeah so we found that you know in terms of differences in ER presentations kind of hospital days yes and so things did improve there and there're kind of a few reasons we conjecture why that might be the case so the one is that you know if you're taking oral hydrocortisone Commonly, you'll have people that have like an upper GI issue, they get nauseated, and they just can't keep the tablets down. And so that's, if you're not getting to the ED fast enough, you're also likely dehydrated, um, that can really kind of compound the issue and push someone towards an adrenal crisis. If you're giving the hydrocortisone subcutaneously, you don't really rely on that oral tract anymore. And so I think people are somewhat protected against some of the issues that really can affect the taking of kind of the oral steroid doses. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think that might kind of explain what we saw in terms of fewer ED visits, fewer hospitalization days uh, for adrenal crises. In terms of the safety you're asking about, so overall we found it to be quite safe. Uh, you know, one concern we always have is that you know someone that's using an insulin pump to deliver hydrocortisone, if there is an interruption to the delivery of hydrocortisone, it can be hard to tell because if you're getting insulin through an insulin pump. Then you'll have a sensor. The continuous glucose monitor will tell you if the numbers are rising because there's an interruption in the insulin. With this, you really don't get that warning. And so people do have to be very in tune to kind of what's happening symptoms wise. And if they're developing these adrenal insufficiency symptoms really out of the blue, despite bolusing for it, then that's really a clue that maybe there's an occlusion there. Maybe there's you know some kinkage that's preventing the hydrocortisone from being delivered. And we always tell them, change it out, remove the set, install a different one at a different site always carry oral hydrocortisone with you just as like a stopgap measure. Um, but other than that, the main safety issue we saw was kind of skin infections. And so people would have abscesses, um, two people needed an incision and drainage to kind of address their abscess uh, within uh, the realms of our study. And how were, um, were you addressing, adjusting levels for things like stress, illness, or various levels of physical activity, different, you know, life moments that aren't necessarily regular throughout the day. Yeah. And that, that's so tricky too, right? Because we'll have people that have adrenal insufficiency, they'll run a half marathon and they don't need to make an adjustment in their dose, but they're kind of the rare ones. For others, you know, even taking kind of a, a brisk walk through the mall might kind of trigger some of those symptoms. And so we sort of leave it up to the patient. We kind of tell them, you know, look back, kind of see what some of these activities are that seem like they makes it more difficult in terms of managing your adrenal insufficiency symptoms. And if you're doing something like that, then about 30 minutes before you can give a bolus, it can be a very small bolus through the pump because by that time it will have kicked in and hopefully it'll kind of get you through that activity for the next few hours without you becoming symptomatic. But we tell them that they can essentially repeat this bolus every four hours if needed uh, to help address some of these um, uh, kind of immersion, emotional turmoil type situations that can lead to uh, an exacerbation of their adrenal insufficiency symptoms.